I'm gonna talk about latching. So we haven't got to that part yet and it can be the trickiest part for a lot of people when you're breastfeeding because while breastfeeding is a natural way to feed a baby, it can feel very unnatural and that's normal. It's not something that we're just supposed to get the hang of and know how to do right away or we think it's just gonna intuitively come to us. That really doesn't happen for most people. And that's all right because your baby is the only one born with reflexes and instincts to help them breastfeed. For you, it's an entirely learned skill. It's something that you have to practice. So today I have with me my teaching demos. So if you have ever worked with me in any capacity, if you are a former client of mine, if you have joined me in a class of any kind, you've seen these too. Um, this is how I work virtually. So in my practice, I support in person and virtually. And these are the two things I use most often when we're working virtually for many obvious reasons. But today I am going to use both of them to guide you with some tips around latching your baby. So if you're watching this live and you have some questions about latching, please feel free to put them in the comments. And then that way I can make sure that I answer them throughout the video. But otherwise, I'm going to cover the the basics and the what the basics are is all about how to position your baby and watch your baby for these reflexes that they have because when you can harness their reflexes you can make breastfeeding feel easier so there is not one single right position that is going to work for every single person and every single body and that is a really important piece of information, especially if you give birth in the hospital, because they like to pretty much show you one or two positions and then send you on your way. And if those one or two positions don't work, and that's kind of all you know how to do, then you're on YouTube trying to find videos and things feel stressful. So in the hospital, a lot of what they teach is a football hold where, oh, I'm gonna adjust this there where we have our baby is tucked underneath us so there's a lot of football hold happening in hospitals and there's a lot of the cradle or cross cradle so the cradle hold is where your baby is supported so that whatever side they're feeding on that arm is supporting them the cross cradle is where your other arm supports them and then your hand is free to lift or move your breast as you need those are the main positions that they'll teach you in hospital. And yes, they can be effective, but it's also important how comfortable you feel. And we also have to look at your baby and how comfortable they feel. But it also matters your body shape and size, your breast shape and size, your baby's shape and size. Everyone's torsos are different lengths and sizes and shapes. And so this affects how you need to position your body into these positions. So that's why it really, there really isn't one position that's going to work for every single person. It's more about how the latch feels and how your baby's positioned. Because I could care less if the latch looks good if you're in pain. And a lot of the times what happens in hospital is, oh, that looks good, yep. And then they're on their way. But you're like, okay, well, it doesn't feel good. And like, I'm not sure how to tell if they're swallowing. Um, that's one of the biggest things with all of my clients is teaching you how to recognize when your baby is swallowing milk. And when I assess a feeding, every time baby swallows, I say it out loud. I'm like, that's a swallow, that's a swallow. Like, see what's happening here, that's a swallow. Because it's important that you know how to recognize these things when I'm not there. So with latching your baby, what I'm gonna talk about can, it, it applies in, in any position for the purposes of this video and how easy it is for me, I'm probably just gonna demonstrate with a cross cradle hold, just because I can't do sideline. Um, football hold, we're not gonna get a good view the way that this, this camera is. There's a lot of other holds like a koala hold where baby's kind of straddled on your leg. So there's many, many ways you can hold and feed a baby. But for this video, I'll focus mostly on cross cradle and cradle holds. The the first thing that we want to make sure is that your baby is free. 
so they are not in a swaddle. We want the swaddle off, we want the scratch mittens gone, we do not want them tight and constricted and in a little straight jacket, basically, because babies feed with their full body. They need that whole body experience, their sensory feeders. They need to be able to feel their body in space and what's going on. Also, when we eliminate the swaddle, we can get baby closer to us because when they're swaddled, you know, they might be swaddled like this, you might be swaddled with one arm down. We don't want to create any distance between your body and your baby. We want like, when you hear the words tummy to tummy, it's not just like your baby's turned to you, it, they're literally pushed up against you. So the very first step is to eliminate the swaddle and the scratch mitts and then get skin to skin. Take everything off, skin to skin, doesn't mean like I just lift my shirt up here and, and you know my baby's in a diaper and they're latched on. I would have nothing on from the waist up. Baby would just have a diaper, fully skin to skin. The reason that I encourage this, especially if latching isn't going that great, is because of oxytocin. That is the love hormone. That's the hormone that's released every time you kiss and cuddle and hold and smell your baby. Every time you guys are touching each other and that's the hormone that squeezes the milk sacs to push milk out for your letdown. So it's literally the hormone that makes milk come out of your body. So oxytocin has to be flowing to help with latching because then as soon as the milk flows, baby gets that instant reward of milk and then they continue their sucking pattern, which I'll talk about. But those are the, the first steps. The next would be to get you comfortable, get your body comfortable. Do you need to recline and lay back? It, it can be a really helpful position. There was a, a study, I think it was in 2020, maybe 2021, um, in Italy, where they actually did research on that laid back position, uh, and it resulted in less nipple pain over and over again. So the group that used laid back breastfeeding had less pain because they were able to get their babies to have a deep latch. So getting your body in a comfortable position. Now for some people that doesn't mean to always be reclined, but have pillows, support your back, your shoulders, your hips, make sure you feel good because the next step is to bring your, let's fix my headphone, is to bring your baby to your body. So that's another thing. And as a, when I was a first time mom, I was guilty of that too. I would just go down to my baby and I've seen it in the office many times. I've had, you're not alone if you're doing this. I've had many clients that do it. Uh, and as I said, I did it myself as a first time mom, where especially if we're using a nursing pillow because we end up using that pillow to support our baby's weight. And I have an Instagram live I did uh, about using a breastfeeding pillow because they're just designed to bring your baby closer to you. They're not meant to fully support your baby, but it's, very common and easy to have your baby and then you're kind of coming down and then it's like, okay, yeah, they're latched. Well, this is incredibly uncomfortable. So that's why I always make sure that you're positioned well first and then we can bring our baby to our body. Because then also when we do that, that's when these instincts, these reflexes that they have can kick in. You're going to see a, your baby kind of like root around. So. In, for example, they're kind of trying to find the breast and they look very like disorganized and like what's going on and you're like, okay, baby, like it's, it's right here. You almost got it. I know. And as frustrating as that can feel, that's a very important step for your baby because they're trying to find the breast. We know that newborns do not have great eyesight. It's about from the distance from your breast to your face, eight to 12 inches. It gets better with time. So they need because of that, they need to use their hands and they need their head free. They need their whole body to be able to feed. So that's why I said all of those things earlier with the, the swaddle, the scratch mitts, skin to skin. So what happens is we want to bring them to our body, but we want to make sure that their, their body is in alignment so that their head, neck, shoulders, hips, feet, they make a straight line. We want their nose and their toes to be pointing in the same direction. If you think nose and toes and they're facing the same way, that automatically means your baby's hips are turned towards you, which means that they're tummy to tummy. 
This is what's going to help make feeding easier. The reason it's so important that your baby has this alignment, this straight line facing you, is so that they can feed well. If you think of yourself for a minute about having a drink of water, if you drink head on and you take a sip, it's a lot easier than if you try and take a drink like this. So that's why we want your baby to be fully lined up facing you because then they can have that easier way to drink milk. The other part of that is when you take a drink, what happens? Extension. So I lift up to extend to take a drink. Your baby has to be able to do that too. That's the reason we don't want to be holding their head. And it's so scary when you're a first time mom and you have this tiny little newborn and all we hear, support the head, support their head. But when you're holding them and you can actually support the base of their head, so palm is across the shoulder blades, you're supporting right at the base of their head, my fingers are just behind the ears here, that's actually enough support that they're not, their head won't be super floppy, but they will be able to create that extension, which is going to allow for them to come up and over and get that deep latch. If we're touching the back of their head, there's many things that could happen. The most common is they're just going to come off. They're not going to latch. They're going to pull away because they're feeling that stimulation. And the other thing is we need to keep the breast a safe place. So they need to feel comfortable and safe. And, and part of that is having the free movement that they need to find the breast because their eyesight isn't good. So we've brought them towards our body. We have them lined up. And now it's getting them to latch. So we, when we have them in that, that straight line and their body is positioned well, the other piece of information to keep in mind is that we don't actually want their mouth lined up right with your nipple. As much as that makes sense, like put the nipple in their mouth, it's going to cause a shallow latch, which is going to cause pain and damage and discomfort and reduce milk transfer and a whole host of other challenges. We actually want your baby to be further down. So we want the nipple to be a lot closer to your baby's nose and actually this space here, the philtrum right above the upper lip. And when you're actually in that position, it could it it will look a little awkward. Like it will look like your baby is way underneath the breast. But when we go back to the fact that they have reflexes and instincts to help them feed, when they create that extension to come forward, that's when they basically come like all the way up and, and over. And that's how we get that deep latch. So we're not... It's not like a bottle where we're like, okay, just point it right at their mouth. We need that, the, the nipple to actually be a lot higher. And then we want to watch our baby because those reflexes that they have start to kick in. As soon as they're on your body, as soon as they're laying on your body, they start rooting. So rooting is that, that side to side, like where's the nipple, where's the milk? They start rooting back and forth. Once they kind of, you know, they might hit it with their nose. Once they find that, then they start they start seeking for it. They start going up and down because that will help them actually find the breast and plant their chin. The chin is the key to getting a deep, a deep latch, getting a wide mouth. It's the chin. When they plant their chin on the breast, it stimulates a reflex. So when it's a reflex, it's involuntary. It just happens. So that stimulates a reflex for them to get a wide gape. So that wide mouth is really important to get that deep latch. So when the chin plants, they automatically open up wide. And what, will, what it will look like is the nipple will still be really close <clears throat> to your baby's nose, but then they'll come up and with their mouth, they'll actually come all the way over. So what will happen is the nipple will actually end up pointing towards the roof of your baby's mouth, the palate. That's what stimulates the next reflex, which is the final in the series, to suck. And then baby starts sucking really quickly, these rapid sucks, and then milk starts to flow, and then the pattern changes, and now it's suck, suck, swallow, suck, swallow, suck, swallow, as they actively feed. All of that happens in like a split second, and I just took over 10 minutes to explain that. So this is why breastfeeding is a learned skill. This is why it takes time and patience and practice, and it's okay if you don't get that right away, 
as I said, very rarely does this come normal and natural to everyone. I had a very challenging time as a first time mom and that's what brought me here to be a board certified lactation consultant. But if you can focus on making sure that you're comfortable, your baby and you are nice and close together, that we've taken away anything that's going to interfere with baby's reflexes like the swaddles and the and the scratch mitts and we can have some patience to allow them the opportunity to move through these motions to then get that deep latch where their chin is planted and they open up really wide and in that moment actually as they open up wide that's when you could help them a little bit and you could you know your hand is across the shoulder blade you could just the slightest little push, the little guide forwards to get them to latch. I really don't like in hospital settings where it's like, okay, now, and it's like, they just shove your baby on and that doesn't help anyone. And like I said, we want the breast to be a very safe place for your baby. So when we can take the time to watch our babies and watch them go through those reflexes and when we see that wide, wide mouth, we just bring them over and then they should latch comfortably it should feel good in the first few weeks after birth some mild tenderness some discomfort can be totally normal but if it's excruciating if it's hurting the entire feeding if your nipples coming out in a different shape than when it went in if it's a different color if it is painful then it's not okay something something is needs to be adjusted somewhere and that's where an IBCLC can help you but it it can take it can take some time and if your baby latches and it's uncomfortable just use your small finger right in the side of their mouth. Just stick it in there. It'll break the seal because when your baby latches, their tongue has to do all kinds of things to create a vacuum inside the mouth. So they are sealed on there. And then that's how they're able to draw milk out. So trying to pull them, we'll just pull them straight off the breast will hurt. So we always want to break the seal and then you can try again. But it's important that you also continue to feel comfortable and relaxed because the more frustrated that we start to feel, the more our anxiety goes up, the more this starts to affect oxytocin and things just start to feel frustrating. We can have challenges with our milk letdown. Another reason it's really important to catch our baby's early hunger cues, and this is also why I'm not a huge fan of apps to kind of guess when our baby's hungry. We want to learn our baby. We, you know, we just met them. It's going to take a little while, but we want to learn what their cues are to say I'm hungry because if we can catch those cues just as they're starting to say that they're hungry, then we have those few minutes to work on getting baby into a good position and latch versus now they're crying, they're hangry, and now we need to just spend time to calm them down before we can even get them to, to latch in the first place. So I hope that that helped clear some things up around positioning your baby at the breast and how to get a, a comfortable latch. It's really about their chin placement and we want to make sure that the, the chin is on the skin so that their, their chin is actually on the breast. And then that way they can, we can follow their reflexes and they can open up wide and they can get that deep latch, which is going to be comfortable for you. Because what happens is when it's a deep latch, the nipple is drawn all the way to the back of their mouth where the soft palate is, so it's not bone anymore. It's a comfortable space where they can effectively remove milk, which is great for supply, ensuring that they're getting enough, and then you're physically, you're feeling comfortable. So when that happens, then we can watch our baby for swallows. So we can watch their, their jawline and their chin and watch when it comes down and pauses and then comes back up. We can also hear them. After those first few days, after your colostrum starts to transition and you're having larger volumes of milk and the milk is slowly becoming mature breast milk, then we can, we have audible swallows. We can hear the, like we can hear the swallows happening. With colostrum, not so much. That's where we want to look for how they're feeding because it's a smaller volume of milk and they're going to swallow less often. It's very thick. So that, that very early days will, will look different than like a, a four, six, eight week old, but the principles are all still very much the same, especially in the first three months. After three months, babies start to get a little bit more distracted. 
Um, sometimes you have to change feeding positions. They start to get better at feeding, so they feed for shorter periods of time. I'm nursing a 13-month-old. He'll nurse like hanging off. I, I just took a picture the other day because his, he did what I just said don't do, where his head's kind of turned, his belly's just hanging out facing another way, but he's drinking fine and well because it, it's just it's very different from a newborn. So it's... It's definitely something that takes time. It's definitely something that it's okay if you're not getting the hang of right away. And it's something that there is a lot of support out there for you. All kinds of support, all kinds of levels of support. So I don't just mean automatically an IBCLC. I mean La Leche League, breastfeeding peer counselors, uh, support groups like this. When it comes to though, no matter what I'm doing, it's painful. I'm really worried my baby's not getting enough milk. The pediatrician says they're not drinking enough. Things like that, that's when you want to find an IBCLC. We are the experts when it comes to breastfeeding and lactation. We're, this is our, our world. It's lactation science and the art of the actual positioning baby at the breast and breastfeeding. So if you are catching the replay of this, let me know if you have questions. Put them in the comments and I will answer them for you or direct you to some additional resources. I hope that was helpful and that you feel a little bit more confident in understanding the stages of getting your baby to, to latch on and nurse.